Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here we are. It is a great day to be alive, and we are out here fishing, and we have been having some fun catching some fish. But I wanted to sit down with you guys for just a minute and give you my top baits for the month of September. Now, I know what you're thinking to yourself, Alex, there's already been so many videos put out about the top baits for September. Well, I wanted to give you my top baits. Now that we're a couple weeks into September, we've all realized how tough it can actually be. I wanna give you my top baits so that you guys can finish out the month and hopefully put some really big fish into the boat using some of the baits that we're gonna talk about today because a lot of people, when they put these videos out, they talk about September, it's one of the toughest months. It's the end of the summer, you're gonna to have to downsize, you're gonna to have to go finesse. I'm completely opposite to that. I've had a ton of success in the month of September doing the exact opposite of what everybody else says to do. And I put a ton of fish into the boat. I just won a kayak tournament a couple days ago in the month of September doing some of these techniques. And I've spent all day today catching fish using these techniques as well. And so I thought I would sit down, talk about these techniques and kind of talk about my approach to the month of September. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about before we get into the actual baits is where am I gonna be fishing these baits at? Because I can give you all the baits in the whole entire world, but if I'm not telling you the area of the lakes to concentrate on, then it's not helping you at all. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for two different things. The first thing is going to be anywhere that has deep water access. So when you're looking at your map or you've got a map, go if, even if you gotta get a paper map, go buy a paper map look for where those contour lines get really really condensed if you can find those really condensed contour lines what that means is that is an area that has access to deep water it's a more vertical style bank that's the first thing that i'm looking for in the month of september because i want to be able to fish an area not only where there's a bunch of residential fish that live there all year round but have fish that have access to deep water all year round because in the month of september it's a very transitional month we're transitioning from summer to fall from warm weather to cooler weather we've got hurricanes moving in we've got cold fronts we've got thunderstorms I mean we've got like every month of the year all condensed into one little thing here I mean at the beginning of the month it could literally be 80 and there are a hurricane in the Gulf but by the end of the month it's highs in the 50s and the 60s and so it's one of those things is you need to look for those areas like those areas with very condensed contour lines access to deep water where those fish can just easily transition from shallow to deep and not have to move very far. The second thing that I'm gonna be looking for is anywhere that there's cooler water being dumped into your body of water. Now for a lake, this is gonna be creeks and rivers. For ponds, this is gonna be anywhere that the water flows in. It could be as easy as a culvert where water and drain water runs in. You would be amazed how much cooler that water is. And also that water movement is gonna to help to oxygenate the water and it's gonna get those fish to condense into that area because not only will the predatory fish condense there, but also the bait fish and what they're eating is going to condense there as well. So those are the two things that I'm looking for. Now let's get into the baits that I'm going to be throwing. The first thing, and this isn't really in any particular order, but it's just the one that I'm gonna pick up first, is going to be some shad style crankbait. Now there's a bunch of different crankbaits out on the market. The one that I have been using and loving the most is the brand new Berkley Dime. Now this thing is really, really cool because it comes in a bunch of different sizes and the size that I've been using the most is the Dime 6. This is a six foot diving crankbait. Now what's really important to me about it is the profile. There are millions upon millions of those size bait fish up shallow right now. Their thread fin shad, it's what the bass are eating on and that is what I'm trying to mimic. And you're gonna notice a lot of what I talk about today is gonna be very shad oriented. Now, if you live on a bluegill lake, throw something that looks like a bluegill. It's really as simple as that. But for me, it's going to be shad. And so this, Dime 6 is really a good representation of those shad. Now I'm going to beat the banks with these. I'm really going to be focusing in on that vertical cover that I was talking about. Just literally going down the bank, throwing this thing up on the bank, cranking it back and just moving and grooving. I'm not trying to slow it down. I'm not doing stop and go. I'm not trying to, you know, weave it in and out of cover. I'm literally 
going burning this thing and fishing it as fast as i can knocking it off cover as hard as i can and getting those bass to react because that's what i'm looking for is a reaction bite there are like i said millions of these shad up shallow and i have to make my shad look different than the rest of them and the number one way you can do that is with speed and deflection and the only way that you're going to get speed and deflection is reeling that thing fast and knocking it off cover hard and so that's going to be the first bait that i'm going to pick up well not the first but like i said it's going to be one of the baits that i pick up in the month of september that i feel like i'm going to get a ton of bites on and for me it's very important to mimic those shab the next one is going to be a bait that is going to be one of those kind of shallower water baits when i'm looking in the backs of the creeks when i'm looking to that flowing water especially when i'm looking at that flowing water and that is going to be the berkeley slobber knocker a bladed jig now i like the berkeley slobber knocker in particular for moving water because it does such a good job in moving water the way that this blade is inside of that head it's that you know head through design it does a really really good job in moving water I actually did really well in a tournament just a couple weeks ago throwing the slobber knocker in an area that had a turn of current being pushed out through it essentially what i did is i went up in a river and then from that river i went up into a creek and then i was fishing where the creek actually funneled down under a bridge and that funnel had funneled down not only the bait fish but the bass were in there as well and it ended up being a bunch of gizzard shad and thread fin they were about the size of that slobber knocker with the power singer on the back and that did a really good job of mimicking those bait fish because in that area it was only about four and a half five foot deep and so that little dime wasn't just the best tool for that there was also a ton of stuff in there that i kind of cut hung up on and so i opted to go away from the treble hook bait in that situation and pick up something with that singular hook with that blade in the front and then that slobber knocker also does a really good job of actually coming through wood cover as well because again that head through design it kind of creates a hinge and still instead of rolling into the cover it hits hinges over that cover and then you're able to continue reeling it and so this is one of those tools that when i was talking about getting in the backs of those creeks looking for that flowing water this is going to be one of the tools that i pick up i also just have a ton of confidence in that bladed jig right there i have won some money on that thing i've caught a ton of fish on that thing it is a bait that i have tied on not only this time of year but all year round but it is also a great bait because when everybody else is throwing a jackhammer and a normal z-man and a thunder cricket you can pick up the slobber knocker and you can get some bites because it's got just a little bit different sound a little bit different vibration that power stinger combination makes it swim just a little bit different and i feel like it is just a fantastic tool for getting big bites quickly now the next one is going to be another bait for really both the shallow water and then that more vertical cover as well and that is going to be a big loud top water now when i'm using these top water baits i'm doing one thing in particular with them i'm trying to make the most commotion that i possibly can throw as much water as i possibly can and get these fish to react and so the two tools that i'm going to pick up and have the most confidence in is going to be a full size 120 size chopo and then something like the berkeley cane walker in the 120 size as well now what both of these baits do a really good job of is throwing water so when that tail on that chopo gets to chopping it's going to throw water and what that water looks like when it's being thrown in my opinion is it looks like bait fish that are being chased by another predatory fish the same thing with the cane walker it's got that cupped mouth in the front it's going to throw that water and it makes it look as though those bait fish are being chased by a bigger predatory fish and then when those fish see that big profile of that bait whether you're chopping the chopo or you're walking the cane walker they are going to single in on that bait and they're going to crush it and so that is really what i'm trying to focus on because this time of year so many people try to finesse these fish way too much and what i've seen on a lot of my lakes not only here in tennessee but in my travels as well is this time of year these fish start to condense into what we call wolf packs now a wolf pack is a pack of fish essentially it's anywhere from five to ten fish and these fish just are cruising they'll cruise dock lines they'll cruise shade lines they'll cruise grass lines and all they're doing is they're looking for these balls of bait fish that get up here shallow as well this time of year they corral those bait fish up and they start to eat them and so there's this competitive nature in the bass already just like when we're deep cranking
thinking in the summer and you get one fish to go, you can get all the fish to go. Well, what I'm trying to do with these big loud topwaters is I am going down these shade lines, these dock lines, these areas where these wolf packing fish are living and normally, going back to what I said at the beginning of the video, that's going to be on that vertical style cover and I am throwing these things in there. I'm working them hard, I'm working them fast, and I'm getting those fish to just chase after that thing, to get that competitive nature going. So if the bait itself doesn't get them going, that throwing of the water, which it looks like those small bait fish that they're focusing in on getting chased, will get them going and they'll just come out and literally you'll get one of the hardest topwater bites that you'll get all year that you've ever had in your whole entire life, throwing these two baits. Now I want to differentiate between these two baits and kind of what I'm looking for to actually catch fish on them. So the Chapo, I'm going to be moving and grooving. Literally kind of the same areas that I'd be throwing that dime, just moving and grooving, cranking that thing, knocking it off a cover. I'm going to take this thing and when the sun gets really high in the sky and so this is one of those deals like it's almost kind of a timing thing. So if you get down in the middle of the day, it's hot, it's late September, the sun is high in the sky and it starts to feel less like fall like it did in the morning. It starts feeling more like summer like it does in the afternoons. And the shade lines start to get very, very hard on boat docks, overhanging trees, that vertical cover, maybe even the grass starts throwing a little bit of shade. You know, these upcoming grass mats and things like this. Take that chopo and start just going through those areas, throwing it in there and buzzing it out quick. And what will happen is those fish, oftentimes when that shade gets up like that, because they don't have eyelids, they wanna get in that shade and they wanna corral bait fish in that shade. They also use those shade lines because they're not smart. They don't know the difference between a shade line and a wall. And so they'll sit on those shade lines and they will ambush things out of the darkness of those shade lines. And so, that chopo is going to do a really good job of being able to just move and groove because that's the biggest thing with that bait is just going 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 because you're not going to get a ton of bites but when you do it's going to be those bigger than average fish those ones that can literally change your whole entire day and that's what i'm trying to do with that bait now with the cane walker on the other hand that's more of like your typical what you think early morning top water fishing now this can also work in the middle of the day if you're throwing a color like what you see here that chrome is going to be key that chrome throws a ton of light and so not only does it do a good job when it throws that water with that cut mouth of looking like a bunch of bait fish running but that chrome reflects light reflects refracts light really really well and it makes it look like there's a bunch of bait fish up there together and you can get those fish to react when that sun gets up but for the most part i'm going to be using that thing early in the morning i'm going to be using it kind of big flat area is more than anything because what will happen is those wolf packs will if they have access to deep water say they like come back in a pocket the wolf pack back in that pocket they'll corral bait fish in there before the sun gets up and then when the sun gets up they'll move back out onto that more vertical structure to get on those shade lines get up under those docks and then that's when you can pick up your chopo and you go work with them with that bait now the last bait is going to be a bait that's probably not surprising to anyone and it's going to be the only bait that i'm going to talk about today that isn't going to do a fantastic job of mimicking bait fish and that is going to be a jig and not just any jig but a flipping jig a heavy flipping jig at that i'm going to be throwing almost exclusively a half ounce flipping or skipping jig these are both berkeley this is the berkeley flipping jig that is the berkeley skipping jig you guys can see almost identical but the head shape's a little bit different than different this one's got more of that kind of traditional arky style head that one's kind of got that guitar pick style head and that really helps to skip this thing and i'm going to be fishing it in blue gill colors because that's another thing that this time of year these fish not only will they be really keyed in on bait fish but there's a bunch of bluegill up shallow that are trying to eat those bait fish as well. And if they can take advantage of a bluegill, they are going to do it, especially in shallow water situations, especially in the backs of those creeks, because oftentimes that's where a lot of those bluegill are going to live. They kind of start to condense in the backs of those creeks, condense in that little bit cooler water, and they're feeding on the bait fish just like the bass are. And so one of the best ways that we can get those bass to bite is to mimic those bluegills because they will... They'll go stupid for a bluegill, I mean, just straight up. So you guys can see green pumpkins, chartreuses. I got that paired up with a trigger crawl. I did an amazing jig fishing video where I break down tips on flipping a jig, which you actually can watch next by clicking this video that's about to pop up right here. And as always, you guys are sweet, and thank you for watching.